what I'm gonna share with you today is gonna be something that you may, some of y'all may not wanna hear, but I am here to tell you the truth about what you're getting yourself into. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley Benz of AshleyBenz.com. I'm the founder and creator of Child Care Business Executive Tools, where I help you if you are trying to start a licensed child care business, you're trying to figure out how all that works. I help you do that. And if you're trying to operate a child care business and have uh, harmony between work and life, um, I help you do that as well. You guys, when I ran my child care business, it was very chaotic and I honestly was I was existing, but I was not actually living a life. And so anyway, um, I help you all that are owners and directors also ensure that you have a great work-life balance. So today though, we are going to talk about how to start a daycare business with no money. Before we hop into today's video, as always, if you are new here, I just wanna say welcome. I'm so excited that you found me over here on YouTube. Um, go ahead and give this video a like. Go ahead and um, subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet. Also, go ahead and hit that little bell so that you're notified of when I do post up new videos. And speaking of posting, um, I just want to let you guys know I actually posted in our community um, over here on YouTube and I shared where I've been because I posted an update video. Um, if you haven't seen that, go back and watch so you know what's coming on this channel. Um, but I posted an update video, I don't know, it feels like forever ago, and then there was no updated stuff. And so anyway, uh, about a few weeks ago, Nova, our six-year-old daughter, tested positive for COVID. And then after that, my husband did. And um, I was so blessed and, and thankful that I did not have any symptoms or anything like that. So I was able to take care of them. But y'all, it was 20 days of playing nurse and just, you know, just having to do all that. So anyway, that's where I've been at. But we are all healthy. I am feeling good and ready to do today's video. So um, before we hop in, the very last thing we got to do, y'all, is go ahead and grab you something to sip on. We're going to be here for a good 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and let me explain to you how to start a daycare business with no money. Okay, so I don't know how many times I have heard this question or have this question asked to me before, um, but how do you start a daycare business with no money is something that I do get asked often. And I'm going to tell you guys that what I'm going to share with you today is going to be something that you may, some of y'all may not want to hear, but I am here to tell you the truth about what you're getting yourself into. Okay. So just know that if you're new here, um, I don't sugarcoat things. I'm not going to, you know, uh, fluff and buff anything for you, uh, sparkly it and glitter it up. Um, I'm just going to tell you the honest truth about anything that you ask here, okay? So I do want to make that disclaimer. Um, so if you are going to be someone that's going to be a little bit sensitive, you might want to sit Indian style because I'm probably going to step on some toes today, <laughs> okay? Uh, but it's all out of love. And on top of that, there's always different ways to do things. So I do want to encourage you that um, there's always different options and things that you can do. And so if you are new here, I actually started my child care business back in 2005. I started out in a, as a family child care home provider. So we I started out in one room with three kids and then um, it expanded from there. And about two years later, I actually opened up or we uh, re renovated the home and we turned it into a full blown licensed center. So again, I'm going to give you some other options, okay? If for some reason you are in a position where you don't really have any funds, an entrepreneur knows how to be resourceful, okay? Now, you are coming into this as an entrepreneur. I want you to know that first, okay? I know that our mindset wants to go straight to, you know, working with children and working with families, but you are coming into this as a business owner and an entrepreneur, okay? And so an entrepreneur um, a successful entrepreneur is someone that knows how to be resourceful. So what I want you to do, the very first thing, is I want you to reframe what you're saying. And instead of you saying, I don't have, okay, you're going to say, I know how to get, okay? I can get. I don't have. You're going to reframe that to, 
I can get the money. I can figure out how to make this work. I can figure out how to do this, okay? That's the first thing. So at the end of the day, um, if you are going to do this, you, you're gonna have to have money. I, I, there is nothing in this world that is absolutely free, okay? I don't care what it is. And if it is free, then you better run way, way, way far, far away from it. So you are gonna have to have something. You've gotta put some skin in the game. You've got to have something to invest into starting your childcare business. So your very first lesson is number one, you need to think of yourself as an entrepreneur, okay? And number two, you have to remind yourself and tell yourself that I'm gonna have to learn how to be resourceful. There, Listen, when you are an entrepreneur, there is no such thing as I don't have, okay? It's always, how do I get this? Or I can figure this out, okay? And I know I keep feel like I'm repeating myself, but again, I get this question asked all the time and um, I mean, it's just, there. It's not, it, there's no existence of starting any business with, with no money, okay? Now, I'm going to give you some ideas on what it, what does it look like to be resourceful and to, um, you know, uh, think like an entrepreneur, okay? Now, I'm going to give you some ideas on what that looks, looks like, but my job is to help you think like a person that is self-employed, not a person that works for someone else, okay? So the very first thing, again is you have to think like an entrepreneur and a successful entrepreneur is someone who knows how to be resourceful. The second thing is that there, again, there is no such thing in starting a business without money, okay? And so just to give you a plain life example, even for myself, the one thing about starting a, a daycare business, whether you're starting that in your home or you're, or you're starting a center, is that licensing, childcare licensing is going to going to have some requirements okay your location your home whatever that you are going to be doing this in may not meet those requirements therefore that's going to require you to spend some money to get your location in compliance example when i started my um daycare business in our home back in 2005 we had a fenced in backyard but it was not six feet tall so what, well, what does that mean? Well, for me to become licensed, we had to take down that, what I think it was an eight foot, not an eight foot, but whatever it was, whatever, it's a regular regular length fence. We had to take that down and then we had to reinstall um, an eight foot tall or six foot tall fence. That cost it money, right? And so therefore, um, you know, you can't really go into it with no money. There's going to have to be something. Even if you've got to go get some kids, some doggone coloring books, you're going to have to spend a dollar at the at the dollar store getting something, okay? So it is going to cost you some money just simply because of licensing and just trying to be in compliance. So I did a little mindset stuff with you. And so now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, now let's go in and answer the question, how do you get started if you don't have any money? What what do you do, okay? The very first thing that you are gonna to wanna to do is you want to try to find out what exactly do you even need, okay? What is it that you even need? So if you, do you need a location, okay? If you're starting in your home, um, maybe you're starting in a basement or you're, you're gonna be converting a garage, is that in compliance, right? So we gotta find out what exactly do you actually need? The best way to do that is you are going to go visit your state's child care licensing website, okay? So you're going to go to the Division of Regulated Child Care, which is also known as DR, DRC. And usually every state has a website specifically for those that want to become licensed. So if you want to become licensed in your home, there's going to be regulations there for you. If you want to become a, a center, there's going to be regulations there for you. Go through the regulations, okay? Make a list of the things that they require and compare that to what you already have. Sometimes there are things you already have, right? I mean, you might have a really finished nice basement with rooms down there that you could really just turn into a beautiful, you know, a beautiful uh, 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 daycare business. You might already have a location. You might have a commercial space, but the next thing you got to figure out is then now what do you need to be in compliance? And the only way to do that is go to the regulations. I would actually suggest for you to go print them off as well because there's, there's a lot of them. But 
the way that they usually have it, they're in sections. And so you'll be able, once you print it off, you'll be able to kind of, you know, go through and see, take it with you around your home or your location, or if you're looking for locations, take that with you so that you can really be clear on what's in compliance and what is not, okay? Now, back to being resourceful, okay? Because something else that you need that you may need to do is some sweat equity, right? That that means that you may have to roll up your sleeves and do some things yourself. Um, so like, you know, we had to put in some sweat equity to put up the fence ourselves instead of hiring somebody. Me and my dad did that. Uh, believe it or not, you guys, I it can be a very handy girl, okay? I will use a drill, uh, nails, all that kind of stuff, y'all. I love DIY and all that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> um, sweat equity. What is it that you can do? What do you know other people around you that can maybe do some, you know, services, uh, put some flooring down or change your carpet? I don't know. But going back to being resourceful, sometimes sweat equity is something that you're going to have to do. And I think most of you guys here are okay with doing those kind of things, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think that you don't want to do those kind of things. But again, we are thinking like someone that's self-employed and not like someone that works for someone else. And a lot of times, you know, as being an entrepreneur, sometimes you've just got to put in the work yourself. And you guys are already here on YouTube. So you go to YouTube University and find out how to do some DIY projects yourself to save some money. Um, now, how, what kind of things do you need? Okay. And how can you find that stuff for cheap y'all? Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of times, a lot of people, they think that they really have to have like steady the art furniture pieces and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, granted, yeah, I do believe in having nice things, especially if you're new and you're trying to open up, but y'all learn how to bargain hunt. I mean, learn how to be creative with tables and chairs. It doesn't necessarily mean it's got to be, I mean, obviously it's got to be kid sized, but you know, a lot of times, a lot of people think they have to find that stuff from like the discount school supply.coms or those kind of places. And I'm, and I love discount school supply. So just know that, um, I, I love their stuff. That's where I got my stuff from and they have great, great stuff there. But Sometimes you may have to go over to Amazon, you know, to get little kids tables and chairs and just whatever that you need to do. But y'all find it cheap, y'all. OK, especially when you're getting started, you can work. You can always up your quality as your child care business grows. But don't think that you have to get the highest quality of furniture pieces or things like that to get started. OK, you don't. OK, so the next thing I want to address is the question that I get asked, which is, but Ashley, I really need a location, but I just cannot afford one. Okay, what do I do about that? Well, unfortunately, you've already answered that question. Okay, if you are needing a location and you cannot quite afford one, meaning that you would like to start in a commercial space, but you cannot quite afford one, then you are already answering that question. And the answer to that is that you're just not ready for a commercial space. You are not in... Obviously, you're not in a financial position to, to put yourself out there like that. And so don't. And that's okay. It is okay to start small. And so again, this goes back to reframing. So when we are reframing how we think like a business owner that's resourceful, then the mind, the mind thought should be, you know what? It is true. I can't afford to go and get a commercial space, right? Um, it is not wise for me to go out and get a business loan just to have a commercial space. Maybe I can lease. And then you may think about that and you say, well, you know, you may look into that and then you, and then it turns out that you're not ready to do that. It's okay. Say, so you know what? Mm -mm. I'm not going to stick myself out there and lease and then get myself in a, a financial mess and have my family all entangled in, in all those kind of things. And so then maybe it comes down to, okay, hmm, what else can I do? Maybe I can just start very small in my home. Maybe I can start right where I'm at. I can start right here in my living room. I can start in that extra spare bedroom that nobody's using or, or whatever. And I'm just going to start small and I'm going to be okay with that. Okay. And that's what I did. Okay. I actually, I didn't even think that way. I was just like, I already know I can no, like I want to start small um, because I want to even see if it's something I even want to stick to. Y'all, there is a lot of people that get started with the daycare business um, 
and then two or three years later, they're done with it. It is a lot of work and it's something that you have to really be passionate about. You've got to actually like doing it every single day. So starting small is okay. And um, honestly, I would advise anyone to start small, even if you do have a commercial space. Don't try to, like, let's say you have a commercial space that can house, you know, 200 students, okay? Don't do that to yourself. Start with 50. Start with enough to be profitable and then work yourself up to those 200. Obviously, you know, there's numbers and all those kind of things, but it put it to you very plain. If you're not ready for that, accept it, be okay with it, and just start small. And it's okay. You can grow yourself up to what you really see in your head, okay? And you're going to learn so much more about the business doing it that way. And so that's what I did. I started off very small. Again, I started out in, I was 21. I started in, um, my uh, parents allowed me to use, I lived at home. And so my parents allowed me to use what we used to call the den. Now they're called bonus rooms. And I started out with three kids from church. And then it just kind of grew from there. And it actually about two years later from that, um, then, you know, I was starting to see my vision come to life. But I was very thankful for that humble beginning. And do not, we, we've heard this uh, this saying before, do not despise humble beginnings, okay? There is something about starting small and knowing your business inside and out, okay? So do not despise those humble, small beginnings. So in conclusion, a true entrepreneur is very patient and they don't mind to start to humble themselves and to start off small and to do the work that's that's needed to, to get done. So yes, you've got this. I know this was probably very hard for some of you all to hear, but you know that this is something that you needed to hear. And that's what you're going to get when you come here to my channel. So um, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope that this really answered your question. Uh, one question I have for you is... Do you have your notifications turned on? Because if you don't, you better go do that right now so that you know when I post up a new video, which now that I'm back into the swing of things, that should be weekly. So expect another one coming out next week. Also, I would like to know, what are you going to do to start your child care business? What, what is going to be your next step, okay? After watching today's videos, a video, what is something that you're going to take and what's going to be your next step? Leave that in the comments down below and let's start a conversation down there. Meet me in the comments, okay? And let's continue to talk about this. Um, also, if you have not followed my new Instagram page, um, which is at Start Your Daycare, you've got to go over there and follow that, you guys. This is where we continue these conversations weekly. Um, and I answer more questions over there. Like literally, you can just scroll through. And I mean, there's loads of questions and I am sitting there answering and answering and answering. Also, you're gonna get motivation. You're gonna see these beautiful, aesthetically pleasing uh, childcare uh, classrooms. That's just gonna continue to motivate you, okay? And give you some ideas too, if you are ready to start uh, decorating your classroom spaces and all those good things, okay? All right, so again, thank you for joining me. You've got this, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you in the next video. How to think like someone that, uh, scratch that out.